Welcome to this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live, the show which ensures that you profit from your time spent here with experts, either through the industry insights, information, or simply learning from them. And today we have John Hewitt. He's a renowned American entrepreneur and author and a franchising expert. Welcome to the show, John. Hey, Jay. It's my pleasure. Thank you. You are welcome to the show, John. You are welcome to India in this online form. And I'm sure not just in India, but a lot of people will benefit from what we are going to talk about. We'll be talking about entrepreneurship and leadership and also about franchising. So my first question is, uh, John, to understand uh, you have got good understanding of businesses about franchising. I want to understand, you know, in terms of what has been the reason of your success? Is it great leadership? Is it franchising? Is it you had a better mind in terms of entrepreneurial skills? So you became successful. You built several businesses. You know about all those things. I want to understand for that audience uh, so that they can learn from you. Well, first of all, I've been number one. Number one reason is I'm blessed with in, with great uh, skills and good fortune. So, but if I, and, and of course there's, there's many elements of success. It's not just one thing, but I think the one, if I could pick one thing that, that set me above virtually everyone else is that I always want, want what's best for each person. And most people want what's best for themselves, but I want what's best for each person when, when it's best for them and me too then that's, the, that's fantastic. But if someone wants to go do something else, God bless them, I, I, life's too short. Be all that you can be. My, my theory is thank God it's Monday, not thank God it's Friday. A Monday morning, if you're going to work and you're not looking forward to it, you're going to the wrong place. So I, I think it's, it, that's the number one attribute that has carried me to the highest levels. Right, right. Is, it, is that all? Is there more beyond? See, what, why I ask this is, John, you have created two top businesses and uh, they represent two of the top largest retail organizations in North America. There are so many people, businesses, they look forward towards Monday. Many people are worried about Monday. They don't want to come across Monday. Many people call it a manic Monday. Many people look, up, uh, look for that Monday. But is that enough to be able to create this top 100 largest retail organizations in North America? Where does the role of uh, no, the real un, uh, 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 entrepreneurship comes here? What is the tips or tips no, uh, yeah, tip, uh, I, I, that you want to share? And, yeah. and what is the role of leadership? Can you do it alone or you need also a great team along with you? Yeah, first of all, I am blessed. I'm the only one that's developed two of the top 100 retail franchise chains in the United States and Canada. And um, the there's more to it, obviously, than, than simply doing what's right for people. That you have to have drive. You have to have competitive, competitive juices. You have, to, you have to strive to be the best that you can be. You have to have hard work. And the most important attribute in a in a success in anything is perseverance. It doesn't matter how smart you are or experienced you are or how driven you are. You have to have it. You have to have perseverance. God doesn't put anyone on earth just to skate and um, just here do this. You're going to face adversity. You're going to get knocked down. The winners always get back up and keep going. Right, right, John. People talk of strengths. You have shown through your work that you have got your strengths have worked for you. Your skills have worked for you. You also talk about, you know, weaknesses. People have weaknesses, but you have overgrown those and built things. How did you manage to, you know, tackle, manage or overgrow your, say, biggest weaknesses? If you can help us understand, how did you do it? How can others learn from this? Sure, I think that um, Peter Drucker said, uh, my, my famous, my favorite business author said, 
people with great strengths have great weaknesses. And so since I've been given great strengths, I do have great weaknesses. And someone asked me recently on, uh, they said, how do you, when you, when you expand, what, how do you hire? What do you look for? Well, what I've always done is I've looked for people that are good at things I'm weak at. So if both of us think the same, one of us is useless. So I have weaknesses like I'm, I'm a zero detail. I'm zero detail. So I need detailed, structured people to work with me. I'm also a typical entrepreneur that I want to go too fast. And I'm, I'm hard to, it's hard to keep up with me. So uh, my CFO, for example, has always been someone that's, that's detailed, structured, and more careful than, than I am. So the, the key way of overcoming weakness is hiring people that are good at your weaknesses. And, and to do that, you have to know what your weaknesses are. Some people don't admit weakness, but you have to recognize your weakness and then hire people that fit, fit that model. Right, right, John. You talk about inspiring leadership. If more of the people you hire around you who are opposite you in several things, like your weaknesses, they can, uh, uh, they can work through their strengths. Then how do you inspire in such situation where people are a bit unlike you? How do you uh, calibrate those differences into positive Ness for the company for the common mission how does one that uh, sometimes ego can come in ego is a big problem how did you do it for yourself how can entrepreneurs startups you know how can they take care of these things and get people who can complement them but also inspire them manage them and do not think them as you know someone who are cutting off their ideas you know, I'm a student of business, and I didn't discover the answer to that until I was about 30, 38 or 39 years old. And I, I, I won't give you the long story of how I found out, but I, I used to wonder if you took the executives at a great company like Walmart and, uh, and, and the executives at a competitor that's a poor, poorly managed company, Kmart, and I said, what's the difference between the groups of people at the top executives at Walmart and the top executives at Kmart? Are they smarter? Are they more experienced? Are they more educated? And I said, obviously not, because you can hire the most educated and experienced and, and intelligent. So there's some other key ingredient. And what I learned is it's culture. And you have to have establish a culture that where you listen to people, you um, and your you have you you go after the best system, and understand this that to have the best system, it has to be improving, and to be improving, you got to change. And so we've always striving for the best system. And in my industry, I've I've been. I've been blessed that with each company I was with was the fastest growing. And that's because we had the best culture with the best attitudes. And, and Tom Watson, senior founder of one of the founders of IBM said, give me a hundred people with great attitude or a hundred great engineers. I'll take the people with great attitude because you can change at, you can change, you can teach them engineering. You can teach them the skill but you can't teach attitude. And I've learned that in the past. I've tried to change hundreds of people's attitude, never been successful. So we have to hire first for attitude, fitting in the culture, and then for skill. Right. Right, John. One more question. You know, since the last several years, a decade or so, people talk about intrapreneurship. A lot of people within the organization has that bent of mind. And some organizations, it has worked. At several places, this thing has not worked or not been appreciated much. People do talk within organizations about, you know, 
uh, taking the initiative, lead from the front. But what has led to all the things nowadays we see this great resignation and people wanting to take charge of their life, wanting to explore their skills in a much more independent manner. In a, in a way, we can say that it is about entrepreneurship, maybe on a very, not even very uh, large scale, but in a, a small scale. Why is it that uh, this entrepreneur, entrepreneurship did not work or could not gain currency within organizations? Is it organizations were not able to understand? And this gave way to solopreneurship. How do you look at that? How can organizations can get such bent of mind, much more independent oriented mind who can think beyond their daily nine to five, can get back into the system and get best of those people and do not consider them as outliers, outsiders or rebels. How do you look at this particular so that, you know, all can get the industry can get the best people and the best people can get the best of the industry and of, the, of themselves. That's a huge issue in in management that in, you know, I've had two companies, billion dollar company and half a billion dollar public company, 500 employees each. And I've had and I've had thousands of employees um, over the years and so few act like owners, only more two or three percent act like owners. So and I've tried to I've tried to replicate ownership. I've tried to, OK, you'll um, if the company has net worth, you'll you'll gain net worth. If the company has profit, extra profits, you'll get profits. And you know what? There's only one thing, one way I've ever been able to to get own, people to act like owners and that when they truly are owners. And, right. and uh, so franchising has been my, the key to my my career. I've been in franchising. This is my 55th year. So I've, I've completed 54 years. And while only two or three percent of my employees have acted like owners, over 95 percent of my 5,000 franchisees have acted like owners. So franchising is a key element that's helped me in my, my success and my journey. And because when you're a franchisee, you think like an owner and more importantly, you act like an owner. And so that's the only way I've been able to do it. That if you could come up with a secret sauce that you're asking for, that you could change employees into thinking like owners, boy, you could sell that for billions of dollars. Because I don't know any company that has more than 5% people that think like owners and act, and more importantly, as I said, act like owners. So that I, I've done a lot of thinking that I have some um, I'm, I'm working on a way to include that in my next book on how to do that. But I've never been tremendously successful at getting more than two or three percent people to act like owners. Perfect. Perfect. That's, that's the way it is. You go out, you seek something, and then you actually know what is what is important than the rest is. At least you know the answer. The biggest part is whether you are wanting to seek the answer or not. And then and those people actually can be truly entrepreneurs. But you see, companies have been talking about it. That's why they used to talk about stock options and so many things so that at least this person will stay in the company for and think like being a part of a, the whole process of being a part of the profits of the company. Be that as it may. Now, let's talk about franchising. You are a franchising expert. You've done that for many, many decades now. You talk about uh, people know about franchising. What is visionary franchising that you talk about job. the um, the best part about franchising is is that if you if you think about building a business what you need is two things you need a you need a system and then you need people and the people that start from scratch that that don't franchise they got to build a system and and that's not simple i mean how do you know how to how much to pay rent and and where your location should be and how much you should charge and 
who do you hire and, and how much do you pay them? And do you give them a contract? And how do you advertise? Do you advertise on TV or radio or newspaper or, or digitally? Or uh, how do you advertise? And, and then in what's your message? I mean, there's thousands of business questions that have to be addressed to come up with a great system. And so when you get a, when you become part of a great franchisor, and only about 10 or 20% of franchisors are truly great. Most franchisors actually fail. So you got to be careful if you find, because most franchisors in, in this country only have less than 20 locations. So they're failing. There's, there's the McDonald's and there's the Subway and there's the Jackson Hewitt and the Liberty and the ATAC. Uh, but there's most franchisors fail. But if you get a great franchise, they have a great system. So you just need to implement that system. It's my job as a franchisor to give you the best system in the industry. It's your job as a franchisee that not to invent anything, to follow that system. So you don't have to test. I've already made more mistakes than, than uh, someone new in this business has ever tried. So I've, I've learned from my mistakes and the mistakes of my franchisees and the mistakes of my competitors. So, that's how you, that's how human beings learn is by mistake. There isn't a mistake that hasn't been made in this industry that I haven't seen or experienced. Right, right. So in today's time, when things are changing, people are becoming entrepreneurs on their own, solopreneurs, and so many new terms coming up. You know, even in the creator industry, there is this creator, educator, creator, entrepreneur, all those sort of things are. How can people look at or should people look at franchising? Is it like the old times or is it also evolving along with the times? Is it ready to integrate with the solopreneur culture or the startup culture that we are having? Or is it only an extension of an established brand? How do you see that? Yeah, I think the, the key to franchising is Again, most people, most businesses fail. Most businesses fail within the first three three years. So over half the businesses fail. But if you acquire a franchise, 95% of them last for more than three years. So you have much higher chance of success if you already have a proven system. Um, so it depends on on whether you, how creative you are. And if you want to be a maverick, a, um, you want to be out there create, creating, you want to be Elon Musk and creating a whole new industry, then a rocket ship to Mars, and uh, then, then you're not meant to be a franchise. But if you want to be an entrepreneur that can follow a system, then franchising is the vehicle for you. Well put, well put, uh, John. There is much to learn from you, and people can certainly learn a lot from your book, I Compete, if, that, uh, if that's uh, the right name I'm pronouncing. Help us understand what this book is all about. You know, who is this book for? What can we learn from that book? Yeah, the book is about um, just my journey. And one of the things that, that I've been incredibly blessed in my journey and one of the things that's that's um, best about the book, I think, is I talk about all the mistakes that I've made. I made lots of mistakes in, in my journey. So um, I share those mistakes. And I think more than almost any other book. So I talk about what I did right, but also what I did wrong. And again, you can usually learn more from what you did wrong than when you did right. So, um, yeah, but it's uh, it's called I Compete. And it's um, available audio version on Amazon. And uh, it teaches you how to grow. I built a, a, a billion dollar business. There's only a thousand people in the United States that have ever done that. And there's only one person that's built two of the top 100 retail chains. I've done that. Jackson Hewitt got to 6,000 locations and Liberty 4,000. So you, you, see, you see how I did it, including the, the things I did right and the things I did wrong. Wonderful, wonderful. There is much to learn for, from you, John. And so a lot of people who want to learn more about you, from you, uh, what is the best way for them to connect with you? 
my I'm easy to contact John at J O H N at loyaltybrands.com. John at loyaltybrands.com. Wonderful. With this, it's a wrap on this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. AJ, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.